Hey everybody, it's me, your old pal Dan Classic, and I'm back again with another episode. My good buddy Raz Holly clued me in on some brand new old stuff from Lenard that's hitting the shelves right now. Did you say Lenard? Aw, oh, who the fuck are you supposed to be? My name is Malt McFogg. I am the foremost expert, fan, and enthusiast of Lenard Toys. And I've been working tirelessly behind the scenes to, to bring super secret information I'm to the- I'm telling you to keep it down down there! Your mother and I are trying to sleep! I am I am keeping it down. Shut up! And I'm coming to you from my secret lair. This isn't your secret lair! It's my goddamn basement! Anyway, <laughs> I'm your man to talk to when it comes to Lenard toys and especially the core. Oh, so you're supposed to be the loud mouth asshole that tells me I'm wrong at every turn in this episode. Pretty much. Shut up! <sighs> All right then. Kung Fu Takeout! Raz Holly, hit the music! <laughs> oh my god, how much worse are these going to get? This is the thing you gotta worry about. Never hear it on the radio. Never hear it on a TV show. And it always is on earth. So, the other day I was wandering around my local Ollie's. I'm not sure how to describe the place. It's a department store, but everything is a closeout, or fell off a truck, or imported from the far reaches of who the fuck knows. Anyway, I came across something I had only heard about from Raz Holly, and I had to jump on it. Kung Fu Takeout. <laughs> Martial arts themed action figures packaged in Chinese takeout style packages. On the surface, this looks pretty fucking sweet. But then I thought about it. Why would these have never seen retail? I mean, they're from three or four years ago. So what gives? Well, maybe it's because the whole concept might just come off as a wee bit racist. Now, wait just a minute here. Shut up! Now, wait just a minute here. What's so racist about Kung Fu Takeout? I'm just saying, times change, people's attitudes towards certain stereotypes change. Well, I should have known you was gonna try to put the kibosh on these wholesome figures. Oh, Jesus, you again? What the hell are you doing back here? I'm here to defend freedom of speech, you chubby commie! Chubby commie! Nah. Shut up! That's right, I'm here to set you straight. I'm here to draw the line. I am the line in the city. Enough with the bullshit. You know what? You've been interrupting my videos for like a year now. What is your name anyway? America. America? Is that your first name or your last name? My full name is Ulysses S. America. I should not have asked. Okay, Kung Fu Takeout. Let's take a look at the packaging. So you can see this is what, you know, originally um, kind of directed me to these things. Look how cool the packaging is. It looks like a little Chinese takeout box complete with the handle on the top um, and the handle's got like a little, little hump on it so you could have even put these on a peg they would have looked really really cool on a peg um, the problem is with it is that where would you slap a price tag um, when I bought these 
they had them like over the, the logo down here and they were kind of tough to get off. Um, that's kind of a problem because when you have like great packaging like this, the price tag makes a big difference. So as you can see here on the front, we have the logo, the Kung Fu Takeout. Um, pretty cool, uh, justice is served. La justicia esta servida. So multi-language, we're serving uh, multiple markets. Just cool, but again, you know, it just seems to clutter up when we're using more than one language on the front. You know, I know we want to sell these in multi-language uh, places, but how about we make more than one package? Which brings me to my big gripe with Lenard. Every single box is the same. Um, we don't have a file card. We don't have uh, anything specific per guy. This is what the box looks like, even though the guy in the box looks like this and the guy, there he is. But if you take a look at the other one, like this guy, um, look, there he is. And there he is. It's the same box every single time. But let's take a look and see what we've got on the back of the box. Dumpling City, oh, what? So, um, do we have a, the story in English? Um, I don't think so. Kung Fu story, but it's all in Espanol here on the back. So unless you speak Spanish, looks like we don't get to find out what's going on in Dumpling City. Um, so there's that. <laughs> Unfortunately. Um, so we have a, a character lineup, a collect them all. I like to call them. Some people like to say cross sell. Um, so it's a chop suey, fist of curry, mushu master and pad tiger sort of all plays on food, um, or Chinese or Asian food. Um, yeah, it's kind of cool. And I could see how this, might not have made it to retail with how, I don't know how to say maybe sensitive people might be nowadays for these things, but they are such a cool idea. Had maybe they thought of these in 1989, um, you know, 30 years ago, maybe we, we could have had, we could have had these in, in, instead of 2019, we could have had them in 1989 and, um, you know what, the quality of the packaging is very good. I'm gonna, you know what, points, big points for Lennard on the packaging. Let's get these things open. I've got all four uh, of the line of Kung Fu Takeout. Um, so coming up, we're gonna be looking at these things outside of the box. Lenard is always on the forefront of the trends, ahead of their time even. Ahead of their time? What the fuck are you talking about? Isn't this the same Lenard that released a three and three quarter inch soldier toy line just a short few years after Hasbro? Well, well yes, how, however. Oh yeah, and they just happened to call it Gung Ho. And Hasbro had to lay the legal smackdown just like GM and every other company that Lenard has tried to rip off in the past. Uh, you're just a Hasbro fanboy. Horseshit! I call him like I see him, and Hasbro gets my ire just as much as Mattel or LJN or even your precious fucking Lenard! <laughs> Leave Lenard alone! <laughs> Shut up! Lenard sucks! Ah, get out of here, you fucking gobot! Oh, look at that! You made the poor boy cry! Poor boy? He's gotta be in his 50s at least! I'll get to you in a minute. Anyway, let's take a look at these things outside the box. Okay, let's talk about packaging. Okay, this is actually kind of cool and kind of shitty at the same time. You have these uh, little tabs that you got to open up to, to open it up like this because, you know, it's kind of like an oblong shape. Um, You're going to be looking, running into problems here. Now, once you get the figure out, he's still like kind of in an inner box and it's taped shut. So you can't get at the back of it. And then the, the waist is attached to the plastic part. Um, this is bullshit. Um, I think we could have done without this. 
it wasn't gonna float around. He knew he's not gonna float around the package. Cause you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna take this off. I'm gonna pack this back up. I'm gonna send them all the res, Ollie, and then he's gonna fucking review them. And you know what? These figures aren't gonna move. They're not gonna fucking move. We don't need to have goddamn straps and rubber bands and tape and all this other shit, like just sealing everything in because you know, it's bad enough. These things are already like kind of cheap a little bit. So I'm gonna, I feel like I'm gonna break it. I feel like I'm gonna break these things, pulling them right out of the box. And that's bullshit. All right, so the first guy we've got out of the box is Chop Suey. We'll start from the top left on the box. And um, he comes with a sword and a Psy. And the uh, weapons are actually made out of a very soft, rubbery plastic. Um, the body of the figure itself is made out of a harder, lighter plastic. It's kind of hollow. Um, we'll see that in a moment here. Um, he's got some pretty cool details. He's got this uh, dragon sort of insignia on the chest. Um, the body itself is in a couple of different colors. It's got a gray and a black. Um, he's got this uh, mask um, that he's wearing, kind of a ninja style, I guess, mask. He has a cool scar on his face, some green eyes and some spiky hair. Um, you can really see the seams on this figure. Um, they're very, very, uh, yeah, you can see the seams a lot. Um, it looks like, let's take a look at the, uh, the articulation here. All right, so um, the head moves. Um, you can't really get it all the way around because he's got this collar here kind of stopping it. It doesn't tilt a whole lot. Um, he has a uh, elbow that goes like up and down and all the way around. Um, the, this, uh, I'm sorry, shoulder. And he's got an elbow joint that doesn't really do an elbow thing, but it does swivel. Um, there's no wrist articulation. Um, there is a waist articulation that goes maybe all the way around. I do feel like I'm going to break it. And then we've got um, look a little, little kind of a ball joint for the uh, both the hips are on a ball joint. Uh, the knees do bend, go to about there, and then that is all she wrote, sucka. But you can get some cool poses. Um, these do pose better than the NECA Ninja Turtles um, already. Um, you can do a lot of cool stuff. You can fold them up like a ball. Um, it looks like. Um, that we might have had some sort of uh, accessory planned where we can put something there in the back, but uh, nothing so far. Um, no wearable weapons here because he doesn't really have anything to wear these weapons on, but he can hold them. They do look pretty cool. Um, let's take them out of the hands here. And uh, yeah, they're kind of soft and bendy, but at least they won't break. Okay, so next up is Fist of Curry. Fist of Curry is uh, kind of a Chinese monk style guy. Um, these guys all have the same looking kind of sculpts as far as their feet. They've got these uh, boots on and uh, they're bloused here at the legs. Uh, we just have different paint jobs, it looks like, on the legs itself. So far, so far. I don't know about the other two, but the first two um, that we're, we've been looking at, Chop Suey and Fist of Curry, um, have both been uh, that way. Um, now, the as far as the crotchal area here and the uh, chest area, the torso area, um, it's, uh, it's a little different. Um, we've got um, got different sculpts. We've got different sculpts on the arms so far on both guys. Don't know if we're gonna see any repeats. Um, probably, I'm, I'm thinking probably, we have kind of a different pose. He's, his arm is permanently in a sort of bent uh, 45 degree angle position, but we can rotate um, that, that elbow. All same thing on the other side, but basically the same uh, part, uh, the same sort of articulation and we've got a head that spins around and there he is and he the big thing that comes with this is gonna be the uh, or the gimmick at least is the weapons on um, these sort of uh, I don't know are these nunchucks I don't know what to call these things I'm sure somebody watching does if you do go ahead and let me know in the comments uh, tell me what this weapon is these three three pronged nutchucks 
<laughs> whatever they are. Um, yeah, they're kind of cool. They got real string on them. Um, they're made from that soft plastic. They don't feel as cheap, but again, these figures themselves do feel kind of uh, inexpensive, um, to say the least. Uh, the sculpts, though, are pretty nice. The paint jobs are pretty cool. Um, I didn't pay a whole lot for these, but then again, I did buy them at Ollie's. I didn't buy them at, you know, whatever retail price that they would have been sold at initially. I, uh, I, I bought them at a, you know, a closeout place. So, um, there's that. All right, so here we are finally, um, or, you know, thirdly, we have the Mushu Master, or at least the guy that I've been waiting to open up because he is the coolest looking guy. He's got this cool, like, metallic blue, uh, uh, you know, like a torso. Um, although, now that I look at him, he shares a torso and arms with uh, the first guy. Um, whose name escapes me right now. What was the first guy's name? Um, Chop Suey. Yes, so Chop Suey and Mushu Master share a torso and arms. And um, which brings us to my next um, little problem with this is um, right here. What the fuck, Leonard? Um, you know, when it came to the core, you know, we had these figures that we didn't paint the back. Um, now, on the front, we've got just inexplicable um, paint applications missing. Um, I don't know what kept you from painting these shoulders, uh, because honestly, like, this would be a really dope looking figure. Um, dude, why couldn't you just give him, like, black arms? Like, like he was just wearing gloves or something like that, or sleeves. That would have been, that would have been fine with me would have been completely fine um but other details we've got this awesome hat he's and it's got like battle damage on it and stuff like that and he's got a little flavor saver he's a jazzy um martial arts master he's got the same articulation as everybody else so i'm not gonna go through it and hey it looks like what we found what that little slot in the back was for was for a wearable weapon um that the first guy didn't come with but this guy did he's got a sheath for his sword and um and you can put it in the hand like so oh so easy just so fucking there we go um yeah and huh, he's, he's, he's pretty cool. Um, he is a cool looking figure. This is a guy I wish I, I even though with the problems, I still wish I would have bought two of these because I really want to keep them. Um, but I'm not um, sending this to Raz Holly um, because, you know, he's more the Lenard guy than I am anyway. But hey, this is a, a pretty cool figure. If, if you can find these out in the wild, I would pick this one up. He's actually pretty dope. Um, I'm actually to the point where I can't put this one down. Um, he's got a lot of expression. He's very cool looking. They have these like stylized sculpts on the faces that we haven't like super covered, but look, look at that. That's really cool. I mean, like good on you, Lenard. Like even though these um, did stem from a rip off of the Sigma six figures, um, they went a different direction. They said, hey, we're gonna do some martial arts stuff. And, and while, you know, not the most original idea in the world, still an original, a more original idea, a less derivative idea than rip off G.I. Joe's. So thumbs up for me on this line. This is a really cool line. Um, we could have went like slightly less, let's say not racist, but racial with the, uh, um, uh, the food names and stuff. I mean, I get it with the packaging. The packaging is pretty, you know, it kind of like lends itself to that, but with people being how they are nowadays, you know what, you could have easily avoided it and uh, gave these guys like dope ass names and it wouldn't mean he would have been dragon something or other, or, you know, who knows? It doesn't matter um, because these things are really dope looking and it doesn't really matter what they're called. Once you get them out of the box and even in the box, they're pretty fucking sweet. Okay, and lastly, we have Pad Tiger. Here he is in all of his uh, glory, in all of his derivative fucking glory, because Pad Tiger, uh, weapons aside, shares, look at this, 
shares legs with uh, the blue guy with the Mushu Master and shares an upper body and arms with Fist of Curry. And the only thing that's original about any of these guys, because they recycle them all, is the heads. Um, and this guy is the weapons aside, um, the least interesting one. Um, he's just kind of got this gray uh, martial arts gi, um, some baggy pants, and uh, he's got kind of a expression on his face, which is kind of cool. He comes with nunchucks, more traditional nunchucks, and um, this uh, tongfa, or if uh, you know, you know, if you're me, I call it a nightstick, just like the big boss man. So there's that. Um, anyway, um, he's got the same articulation. We covered that before. He's a pretty neat figure, I guess. If there was one figure you can miss, it's going to be this one. Because, man, this one is, weapons aside, again, pretty boring. But closes it out at a set of four. And that was all we ever got for Kung Fu Takeout. <laughs> Takeout. What did you guys think? Let me know down there in the comments. I'd really like to check it out and see what you thought. Are these a great concept that didn't get a fair shake? Or was just this just Lenard trying to squeeze out a slightly less derivative knockoff toy line? I'm not letting you off that easy, you social justice slob! Social just- Hey, asshole, why don't you mind your own business and get the fuck off my show? Well, why don't you make me, fat boy? You know what? On the next episode of the Dan Classic Show, I'm gonna kick your fucking ass, you patriotic putz! Well, you're on, you social justice jackass! You know what? Whatever! I will fucking end you! Next time on the Dan Classic Show, strike first, strike hard. Raz Holly, hit the music!